assault with intent to commit CFC first degree armed robbery and possession of a weapon during a violent crime. He has no prior record. Um, he has no bond right now, and the defense is seeking a $15,000 surety bond. As to the allegations, Your Honor, this uh, allegedly took place on the Swamp Rabbit Trail on November the 25th of 2019. An eyewitness called 911 to report that she saw a man assaulting a woman on the Swamp Rabbit Trail. The witness reported she had a clear view of the incident, observed a black male on top of the woman, punching her in the head and the face. She was able to give a detailed description of the assailant's clothes. The victim was found face down, bleeding when officers arrived. Her cell phone and her wallet were missing. She reported that the defendant, the victim, reported that the defendant brandished a firearm, grabbed her breast, and pulled down her pants. She, the defendant was identified through suspect description, witness statements, and a photo lineup also from a search warrant taken at the defendant's residence. The victim is not present, Your Honor. She's out of town. Um, we had the victim advocate read into the record a statement of the victim. Um, that statement has been provided to Mr. Crane, so rather than do all the reading again, I'll just hand that up to you. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. And we had a bar conference with the solicitor and the judge, and he did indicate that he'd known the family for quite a while, and the dad had done some work for him, and my client's mother done some work, and he, and he knew him as a child, but not, not recently. But uh, I think sometimes it's important to put the bar conference on the record, too. All right, so, Judge, uh, Mr. McKinney is 29 years old. He is single. He has two children. He graduated from high school. When this incident occurred, uh, he had a job at Harris Teeter. I don't, I doubt that he still has that, but he was also working with his dad. They do landscaping type work. Uh, as the solicitor said, he has no prior criminal record. There's no evidence of flight risk. There's no evidence of danger to the community, except for these allegations. So that's the only thing that we've got going. And Mr. McKinney says that he's not guilty of this. You know, that will, time will tell. Uh, we don't have discovery yet. Uh, it hasn't really been prepared yet, so we don't know what all they've got, but I've got enough evidence, enough information to go forward with the bond hearing. He is supported today by uh, an aunt, uh, two grandmothers in the corner there, another aunt, raise your hand aunt, his pastor and some church friends, and his brother in the front row here, and an uncle in back. And uh, they have come forward today. Uh, and, and by the way, his mom and dad would be here uh, I've talked with his mom last week when she asked me to assist with the bond hearing. Uh, his mom and dad had a, had a trip to go out of the country this week. Uh, they plan on being back today. Apparently they've, they've gotten stuck in Miami, so they're not here today. Uh, we asked for a $15,000 bond with the option of a 10% cash if a bond is set. Uh, I was figuring $5,000 on each charge. The solicitor did not make an offer of any type of bond whatsoever. He's been in jail without a bond. Um, I was told by the grandmother, who does want to say a few words, Judge, that if, if in fact, he is granted a bond, he is not going to live in the immediate Greenville area. He's going to live, move to Landrum with his mom and dad. He was living in Greenville, uh, but he'll move out of town uh, with the mom and dad if he's allowed out on a bond. Uh, would you like to hear from the grandma? Yes, sir. Grandma? Yes, Thank you, Your Honor. Again, I'll say that Ronald's biggest crime is trying to help everyone in the neighborhood. Bring people home all the time. Hungry, whatever. He's not the type of person that would harm another human being. That's not his nature. 
I live next door. He lives next door to me. Yeah. So, of course, I'm not always happy with him. Let me be an honest grandmother. I don't like the fact that he brings strays home. I don't. But he does. But that's because he tries to help people. Ronald will take my lawn mow, my gas, and go cut someone else's grass. That's just wrong. What, so, what is your name, man? My name is Labadrina Hardiman. Okay. I apologize. Thank yeah. you, man. So it's not, he's not a, a, a harmful person. He's more to help. Thank you. Pastor, please. This is Wilbert Simpson, please. Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. I just want to speak on his character. Uh, the time that I had the opportunity to know him over at uh, Antioch Baptist Church, uh, he came in, very quiet man, uh, very inquisitive uh, with questions about the Lord. So he had a love for uh, God. And also, uh, during the time that I knew him over at Antioch, he uh, helped around the church and uh, cut the grass uh, with his father. Uh, just a, a good, quiet young man, uh, really uh, never hurt anyone. So I'm just speaking on his character today, just to let you know that he is a good person. Thank you, Judge. I haven't found any evidence of substance abuse, e either alcohol or drugs or anything. Uh, as, as I've said, when I visited with him, he'd been pleasant with me. He just said, Mr. Crane, I didn't do this. It's a mistaken identity, and you know that'll bear out eventually. So we're just simply asking that you give him some type of bond so that he can be out, help us prepare for this thing. Due to the very violent nature of these allegations in this case, Mr. Crane, I just don't believe I can set a bond in this case, but this is what I'm going to do. In 90 days, uh, it, even uh, even without a change in circumstance, once you all have been able to engage in some discovery, uh, within 90 days, um, you can have uh, a, another bond hearing on this matter. Uh, if you so choose after you have engaged in some discovery. Already. 